simply letting those creeps die. You notice he's keeping the Blade Master away from that camp and he's moving the SH up towards it so that he can get enough EXP to level up to three. And here comes the battle and he's getting focused on. He's going to chop down that dryad and then he realizes, you know, this army's a little bit big. I'm kind of scared. And he's going to end up actually TPing out. He, d he runs the SH, try to, tries to get the SH close to his army, and just runs away. And he manages to pick off two dries while only losing one raider, so it's a pretty decent battle. However, the end of the battle, you know, kind of ended with him losing a TP, which is fairly significant. But Kirby's going to run back in here and do what damage he can. Now, the dries are not upgraded, and neither are the raiders. But uh, at some point in this game, uh, you know, notice that Kirby is planning on upgrading. He has built the war mill. He realizes or acknowledges or whatever that this game will probably go into late game situations or just simply a late game scenario, whatever. Um, late game, period. And thus, upgrades will be worth their cost significantly in that situation. So he casts Hex because he knows he's just going to get burned for the rest of his mana anyway, and he can just always chug a mana potion for his next chain heal anyway. Uh, but he simply does it just to, you know, delay that mana burn and keep DH from doing damage output. I mean, this is just, it's just one of the small sort of player uh, skill sort of things that you do. You notice, okay, I'm not going to have mana anyway, so screw it, I'll just do that. And really interesting stuff there by, uh, by the Doom Hunter. actually managed to mana burn him the second he ate the mana potion. And if he had actually been level 3 with level 2 mana burn by the time he did that, that would have been really pretty amazing. But this SH will go down. It's just simply, this is what the drides are good at, you know? They slow stuff down, and then you have the entangle as well for the extra damage output, and you just chop stuff down. And as a raider comes in, finally, he's able to ensnare and focus down a dryad a little bit, and he's able to, you know, chop down on the demon hunter and whatnot. He really should be going for the rest of that dryad there with his blade master, but you can see he's just trying to go for the, for the targets that are killable. There's a nice critical strike. And it's, I mean, this is obviously Blade Master Craft at this point. You know, yeah, there's drives and some grunts running around, but it's really the Blade Master versus the heroes, and then how well the heroes and, you know, the, the units supporting the heroes can survive against that. So you see the Blade Master just chopping down drives and saying, screw it. So you can see the Blade Master is the reason that he won that battle, which is why he has so many circlets and claws and whatnot. That's why people shot for items so much, is because, you know, grunts can fall, and raiders can die, and, you know, you can get entangled and, and chewed out you know, repeatedly and all over, but the Blade Master is very hard to keep down simply because of his armor and decent regeneration and the availability of Spirit Link and Chain Heal. Now again, for a quick analysis on how Spirit Link works, um, you know, if a unit is linked, it will take, basically, the game does the math on how much damage it should take. If a griffin's hitting a grunt, it'll do the math and say 200 damage. If a griffin's hitting a blade master, it'll do the math and say 30 damage, or what have you. Or, you know, a dryad, whatever. It will do the math and say, okay, 80 damage, just per se. Say, okay, 80 damage. Half that goes to the blade master. Blade master takes 40. Half that goes to everything else that's linked. Peons, grunts, whatever. They just take, you know, 40 damage split eight ways, so five apiece. So it does the math, says 80 damage, and then splits up the 80 damage as I just, uh, as I just stated. That's how it works. There's no other rules involved. It does the math, then splits it up to things that are linked. Period. Um, now, Grubby realizes that he is not in a good shape to win this. Winners has pretty easy positioning. He will not be able to get surrounded here because he can pull the dryads back. I mean, yeah, he can get blocked up against the trees, but he. But the thing is, this is melee versus ranged. You need an actual surround on the units. If you have a bunch of dryads lined up against a wall, they won't die to grunts. Period. If you have open terrain, not counting, you know, unit dancing, uh, grunts will do significantly better in that kind of situation. So Grubby realizes that he's beaten for now, and is simply going to pull back. Unfortunately for him, he is above 50 food, and there's not much he can do about that, because that last 5 food is his Shadow Hunter, and he's not going to give up the SH just for no upkeep. So Winners is in, a, is in a situation where he has tons of money, he has a better army, and really, he should be upgrading and teching Tier 3. If I were playing the game right now, I would upgrade and get Tier 3, and I would win. I would win this game, and I would not have lost a Grubby. But Winners fails, and is a loser. So, there you go. So what Grubby's doing right now is simply keeping tabs on his opponent. He knows... Uh, how long this windwalk will last. He knows he has enough mana to use another windwalk, and there he goes, steals it. And really cool stuff there. He pops the invul invulnerability potion, which is pretty ridiculous, I guess, um, and then grabs the item and whatnot. Just, you know, cute stuff there. Um, just simply would have been able to windwalk again if he wanted to. I guess he chose not to or something like that. I don't know. I think he got mana stolen from. I, I'm not quite sure. But 
you know, whatever. He got mana burned, and now it's just battle time. And this is really what Grubby was looking for, is he said, okay, look, my army is worse. I obviously couldn't even defend my own expansion, but if I get a creep jack, hell yeah. Because this is this is very different positioning from, from the expansion battle. There's not a big structure in the way. His army can get right up there into the units, and the demon hunter was in front of, of the lines, you know, and the raiders... Uh, or you know, the demon hunter was in front compared to the creeps, and so the raiders were able to get in there to the dryads right away and ensnare and focus, and that's what happened. You know, positioning is 50% of how you win battles. I mean, obviously, the most important part of the game is simply your army composition and your micro and whatnot, and you know your individual uh, both skill and strategy. But in terms of actual battle, micro is as important as positioning. Just simply put that was kind of an attack movable battle for Grubby, basically, because of just the positioning. You can snare and, and attack move, and it's going to work out pretty well for you. But, Blade Master has a significant amount of mana. He obviously got critical strike at level 5, because you just don't really need that last level of Windwalk. You gain a fairly... Um, I don't really know the exact number, so I'm not going to recite them for you, but I don't believe you gain much or at all uh, of a movement speed boost between level 2 and level 3 Windwalk, because there's a speed cap on actual units. Um, the duration is not really important. He already should have enough mana regeneration to simply re-wind walk after completing a wind walk. I mean, you'll notice that he's going to run out. He's going to be at about 60 mana, uh, which is pretty decent. You know, you, most of the mana you get back over, you know, just from pure regeneration in between. Um, and simply put, by the time you're level five blade master, having another 15% damage boost is rather significant. So. Right here, simply, you know, he got kind of jacked at the back of the map. Not much he could do about it. He sort of, you know, was keeping tabs with the Blade Master, was running his army around to try to both look for expansions. He looked at the bottom left corner, and also to simply uh, maybe even creep something or stage an attack, possibly. For the most part, he was trying to find an expansion and maybe even pick a fight so that he could kill time for his expansion to go up. Now, what uh, Winners knows is, okay, look, I, he kind of got a feel for what Grubby's army movements were. He knew that he was in his base, most likely, and then, you know, he came to the creep jack, and then suddenly he was at the bottom of the map. So he knows he hasn't crept out any new expansions, and you're going to see Winners is basically just going to going to go either for an attack on the main or an attack on the expansion. Uh, now, if I were Winners, I would have went and checked the expansion, at least had a wisp go there for it. Winners makes a really big mistake here in setting his demon hunter up right in the middle of everything, and I don't know why he did, why, why he would do that. But he obviously got his hero killed, and is bad at this game, and I don't know why he sent his Blade Master so far, in, or his Demon Hunter so far in front against a level 5 Blade Master. Now certainly most of the damage output came from a couple of consecutive critical strikes all the while during Hex, and this is why you should always get an invulnerability potion, because yeah, he healed for 400 HP with the healing potion healing scroll, but if he actually had an invul pot, he could have kept his stuff alive for a lot longer, and actually done some damage, and, and done useful things long enough for him to entangle the blade master get his dries out of the way swap the staff around stuff like that so really just kind of poor play um you know he just kind of sacrifices his hero um now he does have that wisp you can actually see he does have a wisp over by grubby's expansion so that was a missed call saying that he should have built sent one there because there is one there but it's not actually checking for the expansion i don't believe the positioning is sufficient so that he can see the expo. And if you switch to Winner's point of view, indeed he can't. He doesn't know it's there. Now that keeps the Wisp hidden. You know, Grubby doesn't know that Wisp is there. But if the Wisp's not doing anything, who cares? So that's pretty stupid. Um, just in general. One of the keys to this matchup, and this is the key to any Night Elf vs. Orc matchup, is the hero levels. And Grubby is winning in hero levels. And Remind sorry, Winners, doesn't even have both his heroes. So this is a fairly easy battle for him. You can see that Grubby, as soon as the battle starts, chews down a Clarity Potion, and he's just simply going to do tons of damage output, keep his units linked as best he can, and just constantly to heal them. And you can see just, you know, Cody Beast getting healed, and that uh, Blade Master tries to chase down those Dryads and can't quite get it. He managed to actually lose a Kodo and a Raider, but he splattered two to three Dryads. Um, and really, that battle could have been better if he simply, um, I guess, positioned his, his army in general better. The, the Code of Beast was kind of towards the front, and it got kind of ripped apart, um, and it made things very difficult for him. And you can see Winners just kind of scouting out with that Wisp. Now, another thing I want to point out is Grubby has known for a long time that Winners has an expansion. Just by counting unit numbers, you can just feel, you know, from playing the game enough, if you're against one base or two base units. And he knows he's against two base, and so that's why he just runs up to the expansion and starts fighting it. 
And now uh, you'll notice he does his army split where he sends the army to go attack, but his blade master, he's confident enough that he's not going to get ganked halfway across the map because he just forced the TP, um, that he can run the blade master away, get a town portal, and then move on from there.